What's up, everyone? I'm Rod Rodriguez here from the After Action Review Podcast, and I want to talk a little bit about Memorial Day. I think everybody handles Memorial Day uh, a little differently. I know for some, Memorial Day is about um, reflection, solemn reflection, quiet, um, thinking about the people that that meant something to us that didn't come home. Uh, for others, it's a bit of a more of a celebratory feel. Yes, there is definitely the memory uh, of the individuals that didn't come home, but there's also beer and barbecues and stories of those people, and we celebrate their lives. Now, for a lot of us, like myself, it's it's a little bit of both. Um, I have my quiet time. I have my quiet time of, of, of reflection, and then I have my my celebratory time where I think about the people that didn't come home. Um, and in my case, it's a little different because the people that I think of, uh, I didn't know them. So I'm going to kind of expand on that a little bit, but I do want to say that I'm very fortunate in that a lot of my friends have lost a lot over the last couple of years. They've lost a lot of friends and even family, and family is almost a relative word, right? Especially when you're in the armed forces. Anybody that wears your uniform feels like family to a certain extent, but there are other people who have lost way more than I have. Um, that sucks. I wish there was a, wish it was another word I could use. I just don't know what other word to use. It sucks. The people that I, I, I think about during Memorial Day are the people that were involved in an incident happened a couple of years ago. And my job, part of my job, was to help find them, to help put some type of closure to the whole situation. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about that situation today. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to be reading directly from the Wikipedia page that talks about that incident in particular. And the reason I'm going with it, with Wikipedia, it's concise, it's short, it's to the point. Um, every story of this magnitude has different angles, different versions, and... Some stories are deeper than others. I'm going to keep it surface, keep it topical. Because the story is, the story is important. The story is important. It's their memories that are more important. It's their memories that I really want to convey. That's the point of this. Not the story, but the men behind the story. So... I'm going to go ahead and, we, uh, and read from that Wikipedia page. And uh, I want to thank you guys for listening to this and hearing their names. Because every time you hear their name, they never really died. They just, they live on. They live on in our minds and in our hearts. And that may sound cheesy. I'm okay with that. The U.S. 4th Battalion, 31st Infantry Regiment, 2nd Brigade, 10th Mountain Division, arrived in Iraq in September 2006, and in May 2007, had already lost 18 of its members killed in action and was living in Iraq under harsh conditions. When it was in May 2007 charged with a military observation post outside Mahmoudia in the notoriously dangerous area known as the Triangle of Death, south of Baghdad. On the night of 11th to 12th May 2007, the aforesaid U.S. military observation post near Mamadiya, with two armored Humvees 165 feet apart and facing in opposite outward directions, each with four soldiers, seven of them U.S., one Iraqi soldier sat guard, looking for insurgents planting explosives, and was ambushed and attacked by a group using automatic weapons and explosives. Four U.S. Army soldiers and an Iraqi soldier who was an interpreter were killed. The names of the Americans are 
Sergeant First Class James David Connell Jr. Private First Class Daniel Weston Cornea. Private First Class Christopher Edward Murphy. Sergeant Anthony Jason Schover. Three U.S. soldiers were abducted during this attack. Private Byron Wayne Foudy. Specialist Alex Raymond Jimenez. And Private First Class Joseph John Anzac Jr. On 23 May, Anzac's body was pulled out of the Euphrates River with a gunshot wound to his head. And even though the article says ISI, <clears throat> I believe at the time it was Al-Qaeda. So. Um, over a year later, on 9 July 2008, a suspect led authorities to the shallow grave of Jimenez and Fauti, 20 kilometers south of the ambush site. Their remains were flown to the U.S., uh, on July 10th, July on 10 July, on 10 July, the Armed Forces Medical Examiner identified them as Jimenez and Fauti. Um, I'm not going to go into the details. They died. They suffered for our country. For us, my job was to help look for them, help to bring closure. And not a day goes by that I don't think about these three young men. My son is 18 years old. Private Foudy was 19 when he was abducted. Um, PFC Anzac was 20. Um, no one should ever be subjected to what these young men were subjected to. But they are remembered. And that's the point of Memorial Day. That's the point to me. And I, I am not the representative end all of all uh, veterans. But my slice of this is to remember these three young men. And I never met them. I worked so hard on this case, uh, on this particular situation, that I began to feel like I knew them. That they were part of my family. And for that, I wish I could thank them for their service, of course. That sounds silly, but it's true. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I want to I want to thank them for being there and doing their job. Thank them for for everything. And I wish I could tell them I'm sorry that we couldn't bring them home. And that will always weigh down on me. Till it's time for me to meet them and myself. Till that day comes, I'm going to carry that with me. And I'm glad to carry that with me. It's my honor to carry their memory, to carry that incident 
on my shoulders. It's something I never want to lose. Because I think that makes this whole thing immortal and memorable. Uh, and not immemorable, but uh, it makes it a, uh, I don't know, boy, the podcaster is losing uh, his grasp on words. It turns it into something that will not be forgotten. And we shouldn't. And we won't. So that's it. Uh, Making it brief. Folks, take time and remember, remember, remember who it is that it's in your heart that you wish had come home. And if you have a friend or family that is deployed, take a minute, shoot them an email, tell them that you love them, tell them that you miss them. And there's a cold beer waiting for them when they get home. All right, folks, that's that's it. That does it for me. I will see you uh, at the After Action Review podcast. And uh, again, got a new episode coming out on Tuesday, so that will be splendid. McCall Vega joins me on the show. And that does it for me. I will see you at the next episode.